2431, offered by Mr. Gutierrez of Illinois. Page 147, line 4, insert after the period at the end of the following. A deportation officer may not be equipped with a weapon under... Objection. The amendment is considered as read, and the gentleman is recognized <laughs> for five minutes on his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This legislation authorizes ICE agents to carry military-style assault weapons, and I'd like to make sure that the people to whom we are giving military-grade weapons are trained and cleared to use them, and that such weapons don't fall in the wrong hands. Therefore, my amendment requires that officers hired by ICE go through the same rigorous hiring routine, the screenings, and the background checks that we put in place for special agents at the FBI. The special agent selection system has a proven record of weeding out bad apples and making sure that the people in whom we place our highest trust as sworn officers of the law are worthy of that trust. Quoting from the FBI's employment website, it says, quote, the special agent selection system is designed to identify the best candidates. Please keep in mind that the process typically takes at least one year or longer to complete. It goes on to outline the education achievement and physical fitness test that an agent candidate is required to have completed as part of the application. There is a three-hour test of cognition, behavior, and logical reasoning, and an in-person meet and greet that is phase one. If you make it to phase two, the website says there is more physical fitness training required and a thorough background check. Quote, the background investigation for special agents includes a medical examination, drug testing, and a polygraph test. So my amendment simply says that we should use the same high quality and sensitive screening process for ICE agents who, we now, who will now be armed with the same military style weapons at least as vigorous as the FBI. If you're gonna give them the same guns, they should go through the same vigorous testing. There are those on the other side of the aisle who count boots on the ground as the only metric of enforcement, yet we have seen what happens when standards are lowered. I do not know all the circumstances surrounding the shooting of a 53-year-old man in my district in March, but what I do know is that an ICE special agent shot someone, not an immigrant, not someone they were looking for, in Chicago after they raided the home. We have been trying to get more information on this incident for, for the family from ICE, both regionally and nationally. And so far, we haven't been able to get anyone to tell us what happened when those ICE agents arrived at that home at 6 in the morning. But I suspect, given how quickly things are changing and how little control, oversight, and consistency we're seeing from Washington on any number of issues, that people are getting shot by ICE in neighborhoods in American citizens is more likely to increase than decrease. And now we're giving them bigger, heavier weapons. Remember, ICE and Homeland Security constitute the largest police force we have, bigger than the DEA, the FBI combined, and the Secret Service. They are the biggest police force that we have. So I think the need for a high-quality force of ICE special agents is at least as important as the quality that we demand from the FBI and ICE as a component. To establish a high-quality workforce and prevent corruption and policing abuses, DHS must prioritize careful vetting and training standards, quality over quantity. Quantity makes for a good press release, but lowering standards can lead to tragedy. So in the end, quality makes for good law enforcement. If we're going to give them these new assault weapons, they've never had them before. Now the, one, the people that get them are FBI agents. Shouldn't they have the same standards of training and background? And shouldn't they be make sure they all get a polygraph test? That we're going to give these people. We've already established that they're going to come in contact. My colleague and friend from Iowa said it didn't matter. Yeah, American citizens are going to be, but there's no reason to protect them. That's why my last <laughs> uh, amendment. So we know they're going to come in contact with Americans. They have come in contact with Americans. We should make sure that we give them the training. This doesn't stop anybody from hiring them. It doesn't stop the bill. It simply improves the quality of Americans that we're going to put to be exchanging with American citizens. I would think we all want to protect the American people and give them the best trained, most highly qualified ICE agents that we can. If we're going to give them these guns, we should give them more training. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
gentleman returns his time. Uh, for what purpose does the gentleman from Idaho seek the floor? Mr. Chairman, I oppose the amendment. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Again, I'll be brief. Uh, deportation officers received pretty extensive